September 9th, St. Peter Claver, Jesuit Missionary. If anyone wonders what exactly it is that constitutes a saint, he only has to read the life of St. Peter Claver, in whom the superhuman life of grace acted so visibly as to create a person who seemed more than a man. This holy Jesuit, born in Spain in the year 1580, was during his novite a disciple of St. Alphonsus Rodriguez, the holy porter of Majorca, a humble lay brother endowed with the highest gifts of contemplation and prophecy. Alphonsus Rodriguez, who having already learned by revelation the saintly career of Peter, became Peter's spiritual guide. He foretold him the labors he would undergo in the Indies and the throne he would gain in heaven. St. Alphonsus Rodriguez and St. Peter Claver would eventually be canonized together by Pope Leo XIII in the year 1888, thus cementing the perfect union which began on earth and certainly continues in heaven. After eight years of study in Spain under St. Alphonsus, St. Peter Claver asked to go to the Jesuit missions of the Western Indies and was sent to Carthagena in Colombia, South America, when he was 30 years old. He was assigned to accompany an elderly priest who had undertaken a missionary service to the poor Africans brought to be sold in the market of that city. These poor strangers spoke several languages but shared a common misery which St. Peter soon saw clearly. When the holds of the boats were opened, all one beheld was a confused mass of men, women, and children, sick persons mingled together with healthy ones, and often, alas, living beings next to cadavers, for the crossing made victims. The elderly forerunner of Peter, when about to retire, asked that the objects of his care be definitively confided to Peter Claver, a petition that he willingly granted. Thus began 44 years of unceasing dedication to their spiritual and material betterment by St. Peter. He watched for the arrival of slave ships, which brought from 10 to 12,000 souls each year, and never failed to be the first to go aboard, accompanied by his interpreters, and carrying the provisions he had been able to beg. He greeted the living, arranged for the burial of the dead, and the transport of the sick to hospitals. Having won their sympathy, he went to them regularly with his interpreters and taught them, during several hours' time, the elements of doctrine. Before he died, he had baptized 400,000 persons. This was his principal industry, but he also spent many days in the nearby refuge for lepers, and also in the hospitals of the region. No infirmity repelled him. The brother who accompanied him had several times a day to clean his cloak, on which he would lay the sick while he arranged their poor beds. It never ceased to emit a heavenly fragrance, however. He slept only two or three hours a night and ate almost nothing. The poor were his beloved children, and he their beloved father, whose visits were anxiously awaited and were always too short. Those who resisted him did not do so indefinitely. One man insulted him for twenty-two years, but at the end of that time fell on his knees and begged his pardon. The vision of his charity is certainly reserved for heaven. His biographers scarcely find words adequate to describe his heroic life. Pope Pius IX, who beatified St. Peter in 1851, commented that never had he read a life of a saint which so moved him. After St. Peter contracted the plague in his declining years, he was left infirm and partially paralyzed. He then had himself tied to a donkey, and in that way went about begging and distributing provisions. He had a very rude servant who often neglected him and mistreated him, but when his brethren offered him another, he asked to be allowed to keep the one who treated him far better than he had ever deserved. Two years after his death, at the age of 74, his body was found intact despite the humidity of the burial site and the live caustic covering it. Miracles proliferated there and elsewhere by the invocation of his name. A large church was built in Carthagena in his honor, and he became the second patron of his adopted land, Columbia.